Yeah, right there. He's sleeping. Yeah. Got him. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> little buddy. There was a little chickadee here. I'm sorry. He just killed his mama. Oh, well. All right, Survivors, Polly Jr. here, and welcome to Vintage Story Early Access. Um, I've been playing this now for about maybe 10 hours, I think I've sunk into it, and I can't stop playing. I can't stop thinking about it. It really reminds me of the very, very early days of Minecraft Alpha Survival back in 2010, 2011-ish days, when Minecraft was actually a good survival game. Um, and it was challenging and hard and scary and uh, the discovery of making new inventions and just discovering stuff out in the world and exploring the world was just uh, it was just mind-blowing back then right and I feel like this game has captured some of that um, imagination and challenge and uh, I'm super enjoying it so I wanted to share it with you guys I think you will like it as well since I know everybody here is pretty much a survival gamer like I am so anyway let's just jump in and play enough of me chatting at you I will of course put a link down below in the description if you want to check the game out for yourself it's not on Steam but it is on itch.io and humble store and you can buy it there uh, I think it's about $17 US monies, and it's available for Windows and also Linux, so there you go. Um, yeah, let's jump in and play. We're going to start up a single-player game. You can obviously play on a server with friends if you like, but we're going to go solo. And I've got a couple of different games here uh, that I've been messing around with. Here's my, my, my current game, but I'm going to skip that. We're going to go right from the start, and we're going to do a brand new world. Let's call it PSJR's World. PSJR's world. If I can type this morning, it's early Monday. Give me a break. We're going to use Punchwood as the seed. So if you want to follow along, you certainly can. We have four different play styles here. Standard is the way we're going to play. That's the default survival experience of vintage story. It's balanced exploration, building, and survival. You start out basically in like the Stone Age and you advance through the ages. Um, but it's it's tough. It's not easy, and uh, we'll do all this together. I'm going to show you guys how to survive your first night. There's also exploration mode, wilderness survival, and creative building. I haven't really spent any time with those, but we're going to go with the standard. And now uh, we can customize the world too if you want, but we're not going to we're not going to bother with that. We're going to jump. Hey, I changed my name, didn't it? <laughs> how did that happen? Because I clicked on the other ones. P S J R S World. Very good. All right, let's create world and jump in and play. All right, here we go. We're inside our first world, Vintage Story World, PSJR's world, that is. There's PSJR, bit of a caveman. <laughs> and we can uh, we can put on an outfit, which doesn't really do much for you. It's mostly just aesthetics, but uh, it's better than being naked, right? Naked and afraid is how we like to roll, but what the heck, we do have... Some rags we can throw on, so... Oh, yeah, there we go. Let's let's just go with the uh, tidy whities Perfect. All right. So, here we are in our world. It's a lovely, lovely place. Oh, look at that. We have a little family of rams and sheeps down there. We have... It uh, looks like snow. So, we're in a snowy biome, or at least on the edge of one. Yeah, we're right here. Here's all the snow. Um, just press M to bring up the big map. This is going to be sort of a tutorial, by the way. It's going to be kind of like Survive and Thrive, like I did with Minecraft... Um, so the first thing we're going to do, in fact, is right-click on our body right here on the map, and we're going to type in spawn. We're going to make a, um, a waypoint, and we're going to make it red so it's highly visible against the green. And we're going to choose a symbol here. We'll use that little swirly symbol, which is kind of cool. There we go. Look at that. So now we know where we spawned. We can always come back here if necessary. We may not create our base here, but at least we know where we spawned. So when we die, this is where we're going to end up. Um, until we reset that spawn, which I think we can do with the bed. I'm not entirely sure yet. So I'm not a total expert at this game, guys, but I do know, well, I know more than most of you. <laughs> so I will try to teach you to the best of my ability how to survive the first couple of days. Now, first things first, let's have a look around and see what we got. We obviously have the snow biome over there. We have these trees. Um, what we're looking for is wetland, like right here. These are ponds. And it looks like the, right there we have cattails. We need cattails. We're going to go harvest the cattails. And we're going to do some basket weaving. Some kind of a structure up there. Maybe we can check that out. So the whole thing, the backstory is sort of Lovecraftian horror. Um, there are monsters in the game. So we have to make sure that we have a shelter before nightfall. 
and we have to have all of our tools and supplies and, and all that ready to go before night so that's what i'm going to help you with by the way there's a bunch of ui things that'll help out quite a bit so if i point towards something you can see up in the top hand corner uh, top middle of the screen what it is like birch leaves right here grass shorts etc right and this right here is a basalt stone um, you can actually press n and you'll get a little overlay that tells you how to harvest or how to interact with what you're looking at so we can collect grass with those two different types of tools uh, the basalt stone we can actually nap to make stone tools because this is the stone age after all and we're going to be doing a whole lot of ooga booga in. now we're not going to nap that because we can't nap it without another stone so we're just going to break it and carry it with us and we shall nap it very very soon we have to find some more rocks um, we also grab these berries here from the berry bush simply by right mouse um, just by holding down the right mouse button on it and you'll collect a number of berries these are cranberries and you do have a, um, a health and a food bar down below the green is the food so you do have to eat what are these current nice so plenty of food here that is great because obviously we need to eat and we need to uh we need to protect ourselves from the elements this is a survival game this is a wilderness survival experience unlike pretty much any other one that uh you're gonna get right out of the gate i'm sure you could mod minecraft and this is actually sort of based on um a mod terra firma craft and uh it's really difficult and there's a lot to do a lot to think about every day just to survive but that's what we love as survivors this is what we do right so let's um let's go toward the wetlands over here because we need to like i said we need to get reeds oh there's some more stone oh there we go that's what we want the flint flint is the best tool making stone this early in the game um until we get into like you know smithing and casting copper and iron and all that jazz but that's going to be way down the road oh little bunny wabby here plenty of livestock around here i love it there goes a little fox running off oh it's like we got a rain cloud up above so there are actually rain clouds and you can if you don't like the rain you can just get out from under the cloud that is really really cool the way that's designed oh copper check it out copper bits okay that means it's probably a copper vein down here. We can't do much with it today, but we're going to press the M key and we're going to find ourselves over here. We're going to right click and put another waypoint and we'll call it copper and we'll make it say yellow. And let's use the pickaxe symbol. So that way we know we can come back here when we're ready and do some prospecting for copper. But that's not a priority. The priority for right now is expanding our inventory because, oh, little bunny there in the grass. I see you, buddy. I think I stepped on him. And there goes the fox. By the way, there is an ecosystem here. And the predators will hunt the prey. Like that fox right there will probably eat that rabbit eventually if he doesn't get home safely into his hole. So there you go. Now, what is that? A clam. I've never even seen a clam before. That's really cool. Look at all these bunnies swimming. Must be bath day. All right, anyway, let's go back over here to the reeds. I was saying we need to increase our inventory space because you start out literally with just these 10 slots. That's it. But we can eventually get all these slots here by carrying containers. So these four slots right here for containers. We can put baskets here, we can put backpacks, and that'll give us more carry capacity. And that obviously is something we're going to want to do like ASAP. So here's, here's what's really cool. We can actually nap our stone into tools for uh for collecting and harvesting and all that so in order to do that you want to squat with a shift key and then right click on the ground with your flint in hand and flint definitely makes the best tool so you want to find flint if you can and these are the recipes that we can make by knapping right um and we're going to start out with a, a knife blade you actually get two knife blades from one so it's a pretty good rate of return right so this shows you our little diagram here if you want to sit down and get closer I mean, you can, you can nap from up here, but I like to hit G, get a little closer. And if you want to see yourself knapping, look at that. Just press the uh, F5 key. Hi, we're knapping. <laughs> but it's really hard to do it in that view, so we're going to go back to first person. I love this part of the game. I love this super interactivity where it's all happening in real time. We're napping and making our knife blades. How cool is that? All right, so let's get up. Now we have our blades, but we need to make 
Uh, we need a stick to make a uh, the knife. Yes, I know K is silent in knapping and also knife, but it's just a dad joke. Just bear with me. I'm going to shut off that overlay right there. We don't need it. So now we need a stick, right? At least one stick. And by the way, if you want to see the recipes, just press H and you get this handy dandy survival handbook. And we can type in, say, hand basket and then click on the hand basket. It shows you all the stats about it. You can actually burn it. it burns for 10 seconds if you wanted to do that. You can obtain these by breaking vessels, which you can find in old ruins, or you can craft it from cattails. So 10 cattails, cattails, and you can make yourself uh, a basket, basically basket weaving. But we need sticks first to make our little knife. So there we go, there's a stick. You can see the roots or the stems of these things down here, the bushes. They'll give you sticks. Little brown sticks down there. We want a few of these. We need those to make tools. You can also get them from chopping down trees. But it's a heck of a lot easier just busting up the bush. Alright, so let's get our knife going. We can make two knives. We're going to need them. Might as well just do two. Whoops. There we go. Two knives. And now we're going to harvest the cattails by and we bring that overlay back up it tells you right here with a knife and a left click just hold it down you can harvest the cattail tops right here the actual tops um, you can burn those and you can use them in basket weaving now i'm attacking the bottom of the reeds so that you're basically cutting off the top and leaving the bottom behind so that it will uh, it'll regrow because you're going to want a lot of reeds and want to be able to come back here and, uh, and and do this again, right? And harvest more reeds when we need them. All right, we need one more to make our first basket. So yeah, we're, we're napping, we're basket weaving. I mean, this is primitive living, baby. It's the best. All right, so here's our crafting area, right? So we're gonna take our reeds and we're just gonna slide them across there and we get our hand basket. It gives us three additional slots. It's not much, but for right now, this is what we have at our disposal. Sooner or later, we'll be able to make backpacks big leather backpacks but we have to hunt for that we have to get hides and we have to tan those hides um, and then we have to craft up the backpack so that's gonna be there's gonna be some time before we get to that point so again this is a, a game of progression you start in the Stone Age oh no somebody died it's a little dead chickadee partially eaten by another creature oh boy it could be a fox it could be a wolf but really you couldn't eat that little guy oh I don't think we can harvest anything from little chickadees, but we'll try. So you want to squat down, right click, and we will uh, dress it. There's nothing there. Not even a morsel. All right, let's get back to work here. We're going to make up our four baskets. So according to my calculations, we're going to need another 30 reeds for this, right? So this is going to take a little time here. This is why you want to find a uh, wetland right at the out of the gate. Keep your eyes open for predators because something something ate that thing. It probably drowned because that actually does happen. I have found carcasses underwater and it says it's drowned. Found one one time that got crushed by something. I don't know what. But uh, it tells you right on the carcass. It's really cool. I mean, it's not cool that little animals drowned in the water, but it is cool that you can tell how they died. You do a little forensics on the corpses. Pretty cool stuff. All right. Uh, we can make one more basket right now. That'll give us a little extra space. We can move some of this stuff up here. You can see the slots there. Fantastic. All right. Let's go get some more. Um, I already marked that, right? That location. There's a whole bunch over here. So, man. Boy. You know, it's true what they say about bunnies, huh? <laughs> They're everywhere. There's a gazillion of them over here. Oh, look. It's a um, it's an old structure here. Really cool. I don't know what the backstory is, but you will find those around. And sometimes you'll find vessels, like clay vessels that you can break open and get some loot from them. But for right now, we're going to focus on making our baskets. Oh! I hear a wolf. There's a wolf living in the area. It's probably why we found that dead chickadee most likely hunting the animals around here all right we now have enough whoops no 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 enough cattails to make two baskets we have one extra cattails are extremely useful 
You can make a uh, poultice with them as well. You can even eat the root. So, for example, if you wanted to break this cattail bottom, you're going to get a little root right there. And that is a delicious thing. What do we got right here? Uh, it's not delicious unless you're a wabbit or something, but you might have to eat it in a pinch if you don't have any choice. Yeah, rabbits everywhere here, guys. It's fantastic. Oh, there's some copper. Copper. Meteor. Oh, it's iron. Oh, sweet. All right, let's mark it on the map. Iron. Make it yellow, and we'll put another pickaxe here. Yeah, we're going to have to come back for all this when we're able to actually harvest it. We just don't have the proper tools for that. In fact, we got to make some tools. Because uh, it's getting dark, it's rainy, and we want to get indoors and start working on our shelter. So let's um, let's do some more napping right here. We want to make an axe to chop down some trees and get some wood. We're gonna need uh, we're gonna need firewood and we're gonna need a club to defend ourselves with and also a spear. But we can make a spear. In fact, let's do that right now. We'll get up. Make a spear right here. Spear head. Yeah, this game is not for the faint at heart. I mean, this is the kind of stuff you do. Everything takes a while. I mean, it's work. We are surviving in the wilderness, and it shouldn't be easy. It's not an adventure game. It's not a role-playing game. It is uh, it is a survival game. And that's what I like about it so much. All right, so now we have our axe. We have our spear. And oh, we need to make a club. Uh, we actually can't make a club until we get a chunk of wood. Oh, so many wabbits. We should kill a rabbit for dinner tonight. What is this right here? It's a conch. Oh, I love conchs. Conch salad. Very, very delicious. I imagine we can eat those. I've never actually seen them before, so that's cool. I do have several hours invested in the game. That's the first conch. Oh, there's a wabbit. All right, let's just grab... That looks like a fox over there or something. Just keep your eyes open for the wolf. Didn't hear a wolf. Here's a big tree. This is a whopper. We're going to take this tree down. You only have to knock down, you know, break the first block at the bottom, and the whole tree is going to come tumbling down. This is pine, and it requires a tier one stone tool. Our flint axe should work perfectly fine here. It's a little slow, but it'll get the job done. Just have to have patience. I love all the little particles breaking off of timber. Very good. All right, we got sticks, we got blocks of wood, we got a lot of blocks of wood, 12. And we're gonna take our knife and our block of wood, and we're gonna make a club, which is gonna be our bludgeoning tool to kill things that get too close. Oh, yeah. Um, and the spear is gonna be for throwing. All right, let's get out of the woods, because the woods are scary. Like in my other game, I'm, what, eight, seven, eight hours in, and every time I leave my hidey hole, I'm still afraid. And I've got, like, copper tools and weapons and everything, but it's still scary. It's a scary, scary world. And that's what makes it so interesting. All right, let's bring up our map. We're under a rain cloud again here, which is no fun. But we want to pick one of these hills and maybe dig in. Like, this looks like a, maybe a decent hill. And uh, make a hidey hole. But first, we should do some hunting. Let's grab some food before we head to the hidey hole. And there's lots of little dudes to kill around here. Uh, there's some nice hills over there, too. You get a lot of berries here, which is fantastic. It's a great source of early food. There's a fox. If you attack a fox, it will it will defend itself. So I'd rather not if I can avoid it. It's just a little pup, too, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and they'll all come at you, too, not just one. <laughs> if there's more than one, they will, uh, they will group up and attack as a pack. Oh, chickens! Chickens and roosters. Perfect. Right there. Get them. Oh, I missed. <laughs> yeah, so you can throw the spear by holding down the right mouse button and release. And they're tough to hit. But if they run into the water, perfect. Got him. There's a little fox right there. He might come over here and try to steal my meal. So we've got to dress this thing quick. So there we go. we got a rooster. Get rid of that grass first. And we're going to harvest this rooster by squatting. It tells you what killed it. Me. <laughs> And we're going to right-click. I think you can stand up while you're doing that. Yeah. And there you go. We got some chicken meat and some feathers. And then he goes poof. All right. Let's go up here because it looks like we have some natural um, food growing. We got some spelt. But we have this lovely hill right here we can dig into. We got some berries right next to it. We have a natural um, food source. 
We can move these berries too, by the way. You can pick them up and move them, which is nice. I hear another little chickadee. Oh, I love this spot, guys. Check it out. I think this is perfect for a caveman. Right here, we got the pond with the reeds. We have animals about for food. We even have some berry bushes, some spelt, which I'm sure we can just eat. If not, uh, make some flour out of it, right? We we'll probably do some baking down the road. But yeah, this seems like a really good spot for a caveman. So let's do some digging. Let's do some ooga booga. And we'll make a little cave right here in this hill. Seems perfect. So we're going to nap a shovel head. Sit down right here and nap it out. I hear, I hear chickadees too. So there must be a chicken around. So we're going to have plenty of food and feathers and that kind of thing. We can even raise chickens. If we capture them and put them in a pen, we can, uh, we can raise them and eat their eggs and flesh and all that fun stuff. All right, let's, um, let's dig in right here with our shovel. I'm going to make a little hidey hole. Hopefully we don't hit any stone like that too soon. We did. All right, well, we're just going to have to work around it. That's okay. That's going to create a nice little shell for us. We can't break this until we get a pickaxe. But we're going to work around it as best we can. And at least have a place to go tonight before the sun falls. I'm just going to need a lot of dirt for this. Let's grab that dirt. And we can, uh, let's see, we can expand out this way. Bear with me as I dig out our hole here. Unfortunately, we can't break that stone. And that is a problem. And the sun's going down, so we got to hustle. Because it is kind of dangerous out here in the dark I want to get some lighting going too we're gonna to need a um, we're gonna need a torch we can get fire going inside here as well all right it's just gonna to have to be narrow for now we'll fix it up later just want to get inside have a little overhang here as well whoops maybe a little winder all right fantastic we're in we're safe at least for now we can block off the front. Oh gosh, I'm getting hungry. Let's eat. We have red currants. We have um, cranberries. Just gonna shovel it down. It's not very filling, but it's better than nothing. And we do have a little bit of meat, but we can go off and do some hunting as well before bed. Just enough time, maybe. Oh, there's another chicken over here. Right, let's go grab a little more chicken meat. Yeah, right there. He's sleeping. Yeah, got him. <laughs> Oh, I shot. Oh, no. <laughs> little buddy. There was a little chickadee here. I'm sorry. He just killed his mama. Oh, well. That's life in the, uh, in the plains. <laughs> all right. Grab all the goodies. And there's, there's a little mama. Carcass. Tiny. So bad. So bad. I feel terrible now. All right. Back into the house. Now we need grass. So to get grass, we can just use our hands on this. Camp. Oh, no. I guess not. Let me see. And collect. Yeah, okay. No, you, do, you need a knife. So we want this dry grass to get a fire started. There we go. Get in, get in, get in. And we're going to put the dry grass down. Where's my dry grass? Put the dry grass down right. Uh, put it right. I can't see anything. <laughs> right here. The squat. Drop it down. And then we're going to make a... Uh, we need to make fire wood, which is an axe and wood logs. Grab a little bit of firewood, and we're going to put the firewood on the fire. I'm sorry you guys can't see that, but you can actually right-click and open it and just dump it in here. So right now it's obviously not lit. It's cold, and we need to get it started so we can make a fire starter. I forget what the actual recipe is. Uh, so here it is. One grass and two sticks. One grass, and then oops, sticks here. Get the fire starter, and then we just squat down. Right-click on the fire. And just keep doing that until it lights. Now, if it's raining out, you're going to have a problem starting a fire. So, fortunately, we have a little hidey hole here. And a roof above our heads. And there you go. Voila! Let there be light. Tom Hanks, eat your heart out. And we could probably just block this off now. I don't know if we need to go back out. At least not right now. All right. Let's, um, let's get a torch going, too. Which we can do right here on the fire by putting a stick. And that's going to burn. So you'll note here that every item pretty much has its own burn temperature um, requirement. So this is not going to burn unless the fire gets to 700. Uh, well, actually, that was fine. <laughs> um, but like meat, for example, let's put our poultry in here. And it says right here, cooking temperature needs to be 150. 
Our fire is at 570 and climbing, so that's not a problem. I'm gonna throw more firewood on there. Yeah, so I messed up. It's the, the burn temperature is what that particular item will achieve as far as heat goes. So when you burn firewood, it's going to get up to 700 degrees Celsius, and the stick is the same, up to 700, right? But for cooking purposes, you need to reach a certain temperature to cook that item safely, right? So obviously poultry needs to hit 150 degrees and that comes into play later. I hear a wolf, especially when you're smelting when you're smelting copper and iron and all that. You need to hit certain uh, certain temps. Better block that off. Um, and this fire pit right here, this firewood would not be enough to smelt iron. So we'd have to get coal for that, which we will do in a future episode most likely now while we're sitting here doing nothing in the night we can take a look at some of these recipes especially for a basket so we can have storage here in the, in the shelter reed basket is just more reeds so i could go out tonight and get a bunch of reeds and set out some baskets and then get rid of some of the stuff in my inventory which i probably will do um, it's a little dangerous out there but somebody's got to do it do that or make a bed and go to sleep here and you can pass up to seven hours but if you do that um, your food de depletes while you're sleeping it simulates like you're sleeping through the night and your body is burning calories so we, it's, it's pretty easy to make this with just uh, grass um, we can actually do that right now I'm not gonna sleep through the night because we don't have a lot of food Oh, I hear uh, I hear a drifter out there. Do you hear him? All right, one last piece of chicken. There we go. Now we can leave that fire going if we want, just for the light and the ambiance and the coziness factor. Or we can just take the firewood out and let it go. So I think what we're going to do, guys, is... Well, let's make a bed at the very least. I think that might be a spawn point. I'm not really entirely sure. Yep, there goes that knife. It's all right, we have another one. So we need, uh, I think we have enough, it's 18, right? I think so. All right, let's get back inside. Block off the uh, doorway. How do you make the hay? I think it was just like this, right? One, two, and three, yes. And then the bed is one, two, and three, and we got a hay bed. Beautiful. And hay bed, let's put you down right here. Beautiful. Now, it lets us sleep for seven hours, like I said. Um, and it will pass seven hours of, ga of game time and might even bring us to morning, but it will deplete our food in the belly, and I'm a little worried about that. It might not have enough food. Yeah, see, these berries go really, really fast. They don't fill up very much. So I think what I'm going to do is just call it quits right here for now, folks. We're indoors. We're safe inside our little hidey hole. Got a fire going, nice and cozy and secure and uh, if you want to see more of this game leave a like on the video leave any comments and feedback and we shall uh, we'll see you guys in the next episode so have a good day bye bye